Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Good morning. Our parasha this week is called Ekev. Ekev, can you say that with me? Ekev, perfect. And it goes from Deuteronomy 7 all the way to 11. And it means, then it shall come about, or this is what will happen. So in the midst of Moses giving Deuteronomy, giving his final instruction, telling Israel to obey God, to stay close to his commands, he warns them in this parasha about two different outcomes that could take place when they enter the promised land. Depending on their faithfulness to God, one of these two things will happen. The first option is the path that leads to life. If Israel remains obedient to God, if they stay on track, Moses says that they will prosper. They will be protected in the land. The second outcome is the path that leads to death. Moses says, it shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God, you will surely perish. Now, we could say to ourselves, how on earth could they ever forget about the Lord, right? God brought them out of Egypt. He brought them to the land. They have feasts that celebrate God. How could they ever forget? But the idea here is not that they forgot that God exists, but rather they live as though he's not important. His commands, his revelation, his calling don't mean much in their everyday life. And you see, we have that exact same problem today. We call it often the practical atheist. The person who believes God exists, who may even confess that God is real, but God's presence or his commands don't really have any impact on their day-to-day -day life. Moses tells us that this often happens when life gets too easy and too good. Moses says, be careful and don't forget how much you rely on the Lord. And so Moses sets up these two paths, which really sum up the purpose of Deuteronomy. If anyone ever asks you, what is the main message of Deuteronomy? The main message is do good and you'll be blessed, but you disobey and you will be cursed from the land. Now, while we're not ancient Israel, obviously, this parasha is a good reminder that our actions matter that we're not to live as practical atheists, just come to congregation Saturday or go to church on Sunday and then live life however else we want to. Instead, Paul tells us daily that we're to press forward towards the goal for which we were called. In other words, we're always supposed to be proactive in growing in our faith in the Lord. You see, Israel, they could have thought, listen, we entered into the land, mission accomplished, it's time to kick back and relax. Moses said, no, it's the complete opposite. Now it's time to double down and get serious about your faith. Even in the early community of the, of the followers of the Messiah, Paul, he dealt with people who had the same issue. They thought the Messiah has come. Now he's going to come back soon. Let's just sit back. Let's relax. Let's wait. They stopped working. They stopped ministry. Paul said, no, complete opposite. Now it's time to fight the good fight, to keep running the race and to end well. So in other words, there's still work to do. So Parsha Ekev, it's a good reminder for us that time is short and that each of us have an important calling to fulfill our mission and grow the kingdom. So the question should not be, should we relax or should we be proactive, but rather, how can we be most effective for the kingdom? Now, when it comes to the broader message of Deuteronomy, be good, you'll be blessed, be bad, you'll be cursed, we have to be careful not to misapply this to our lives. Some people could take that message and they could say, well, if I'm good, God's going to bless me and give me what I need. And if I'm bad, God's going to curse me. But that's not really how it works. Keep in mind that Deuteronomy was written more generally to a nation where God is telling the nation, if you obey, you will be protected and you will prosper. That doesn't mean that every individual will have a pain-free life. Instead, as you read scripture, it's the opposite that is generally true. The righteous are the ones who often suffer. And that's a hard thing to wrestle with. If any of you have ever read Psalm 73, if not, I would encourage you to do so. But Psalm 73 is the Psalm of Asaph, where he wrestles with this very question. He was a psalmist. And he begins his psalm by saying, I know that God is good to those who love him. But he said, for me, I almost gave up everything. My feet came close to stumbling. He almost threw in the towel. Why? Because he looked around and he saw that the righteous suffer, whereas the wicked seem to prosper. They have no problems. Everything's going well, but not for the righteous. 
and he really struggled with that. And it's only halfway through this psalm, in Psalm 73, where he gives the solution, where he shows where everything changed. He says, the success of the wicked was troublesome in my sight. He couldn't understand how the wicked kept prospering until I came into the sanctuary of God, and then I perceived their end. In other words, it was only when he refocused his eyes on God's revelation, on God's mission, that he was able to understand God's plan. And that's how we get our stability today. And so this is the point from Moses to Asaph to Paul to us this morning at Beth Ariel Congregation. Whether things are good, like ancient Israel, where they're obeying and things are prosperous in the land, or whether things are hard, like Asaph, where he's struggling, the key denominator between both of these to stay and remain stable in the Lord is to remain close to him, to keep your eyes focused on him and on his word. And we see this beautifully in the picture of Job. Job is someone who kept his eyes focused on the Lord. He was zealous for God when he was blessed, and also when he was cursed, he kept his eyes focused on what God was doing. And that's why he was able to say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning as we stand and we sing together, let's remember that we all have this important calling. It's not the time to sit back and to relax, but rather to press forward, to fight the good fight, and to continue to grow in our relationship with God. With that, let's worship the Lord together.